Okay, Bruce, do you think Dejuan will be ready to go in this one? No, I don't. I don't think so. Um, he's made some progress, uh, but it, you know, he just is starting to get on the court and shooting and, 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 you know, just a little, a little running in the pool. Uh, you know, we, I, I, I think our hope, our long-term hope or best, best, you know, best hope was two weeks, but probably a little longer than that. And you got to get him back in practice also before you can take that chance. He, he was just looking pretty rowdy there at the end of the Texas game on the bench. So he looked pretty agile. I was just wondering. Um, yeah. He, you know, he, he, at least now he can, he's weight bearing and he's shooting a little bit and uh, doing some stuff, but uh, it, it, you know, it, we just didn't know it, it's a unique injury. And we just did not know how, um, you know, how long it would take him. And, and he's got pretty good pain tolerance, but, um, you know, it, it, it was a it was more severe injury than just a sprain. And you've mentioned several times Davion Bradford surprised you this season. Has Nigel Pack surprised you in any ways? Um. I'm I'm happy. I, I he's doing what I thought he would do. Uh, I mean, I I thought he was this good. Um, you know, I, if if you watched him, you know, whether high school or AAU or whatever it was, uh, you know, he he was pretty elite. And you know, and again, it's not always transferable uh, from high school to to uh, you know college, but. Um, you know, he did some special things, uh, especially if you go back to that, the EYBL, um, you know, where you're, you're playing against a lot of the guys that are, that we're playing against now. And, uh, you know, he, he was special. So he, he, you know, I, and again, I'm really happy he's done it. If he wouldn't, we'd be, we'd be in big trouble, but uh, not that we're not in trouble anyway, but obviously he's helped us, uh, you know, because of his play. Is he even farther along right now than you think guys like Cam and Barry were <clears throat> as freshman guards? I mean, I guess Cam was injured, but. Yeah, you know, Cam had, well, if you go back, Cam had the best numbers and then he got hurt. But, um, you know, I, I think probably, you know, I, I would say he's he's been a little more productive, but he's had to be, uh, you know, just, you know, we've had to, we've really had to depend on him in games. So, um, you know, he's getting more looks and, and he's got to, he's getting more, a little more aggressive. We keep telling him, you know, his, you know, we got to get, you know, he's got to get at least 10 shots up if possible a game, um, you know, and, and trying to get the ball in his hands more, obviously. All right. Thanks, Bruce. Yeah. Hey, Bruce. Uh, next question to Tim Fitzgerald. Hey, Coach, after you went back and watched uh, the Texas game, how much better was the team? I, I mean, we've made big improvement. Uh, you know, there's no doubt about that. Obviously, you've you got to get a win somewhere. That's that's the goal. That's why you play the game. Um, you know, but, you know, there's, you know, it's from Texas A&M after the Baylor game, you know, you got – Nigel back, you, you've had a little bit of continuity with the guys in the lineup, even though you don't have days one. And, and you know, you, you've, you haven't had Montavious for a long time, but, uh, you know, it gives us a little continuity. I think our ball movement is better. Um, I, you know, and I, I, I would tell you our defense in the last 10 minutes was pretty good. The rest of the game, I don't think it was bad. They're just really, really good team. I mean, that, that is as talented as team. Um, you know, I, I know Baylor's really good, but you, you start matching kids and depth and they're as talented as anybody. Um, and we did some good things and hang, hung in with them. We just had the one stretch, Tim, that, you know, we've had all year where we just, I, I said to our coaches, we went back to what we were in that one little stretch and we had our struggles offensively and that's where they made the run. Um, but then, you know, to our, again, our guys, they've done it all year. They keep coming back and, uh, and they, you know, they, they make, they, they fought back and got off the floor and, and gave our, gave us a chance. Now, now we got, you know, again, just a little more improvement each, each time and, and hope we can, uh, find a way to get a win here. You mentioned something that I, I honestly found baffling about the game. I'm watching the game and I'm thinking, 
their defensive rotations have gotten so much better. They look better on defense, and yet here is Texas shooting 65% in the first half. And with that said, you were down four at half. And honestly, Coach, I can't explain it. Can you help me here how, how you guys well, hung I, in there? Yeah, I think our offense was much better, obviously. And, and we, if you go back to the second half for the first time we played, we scored 40-some points and, and against them. And we showed them um, that – you know, that, you know, that we, we could score against them and this is what we got to do. And I, and I, you know, credit to our guys and our coaches, you know, that's what we did. We found, you know, we found ways to score, not just in our set plays, but a little bit of continuity offense and the making the next pass, making the next play. Um, We had, I wouldn't say we're perfect on defense, the rotations, they got a couple things, but I think we had better idea what, what they were doing and how we could stop it. It's just, they just jumped up and made shots. I mean, it's just plain and simple. And, but we, you know, again, we jumped up and made shots too. So we stayed in there. It was one game, I guess we were able to stay in there with offense, um, you know, more than the defensive part and our rebounding too has been much better. Um, it, you look at second chance points. I think we won that 11 to two. Uh, you look at all the other, um, all the other stats that, you know, that you, you consider points off turnovers, we won. Points in the paint, we won. Second chance points, we won. Fast break points, we won. And bench points, we won. But we didn't win the game. But if you study the, the game, if you go back to other games where people, you know, the first time we played them, they kicked our butt. All those stats, I promise you, would be Texas winning by 10 or more on all those other stats. Um, a couple of guys that I'm intrigued with. Uh, and Antonio Gordon seems to be refining his game, uh, kind of zeroing in better on what he needs to bring to the floor. What all has he changed for you guys? Well, I think he's, he's accepted his role. Um, he he's, feels comfortable, uh, you know, with doing, again, what, what he does. And I, I think you were the one that asked a couple of weeks ago, you know, some of the guys – keep trying to do things they can't do or they force the issue. And, and right now, Tone's, Tone's not doing that, he, you know, and, he, and again, he, he's not perfect, but, you know, nine rebounds leads us on the play hard chart, eight points, you know, make one more shot, maybe another free throw. And, and it's a really, really good game. Uh, but, you know, it's just, uh, he, I think he feels also that there's no, you know, we, we don't have anyone to really put in for him. So he, he feels a little more comfortable that he's going to stay in the game and doesn't have to go prove himself and try to do something he can't do. But I think right, right now we have a little better idea of, of some roles, um, you know, which we didn't. And, and again, Tone, you got to remember, Tone did not, he had no spring, no summer, missed most of the fall, uh, missed parts of early practice, uh, missed, missed again 21 days in December. So now, again, for him, this has been his most, uh, you know, consistent time on the floor, uh, you know, since last season. My final thing, Luke, uh, I think he played 20-plus minutes against Tech, if I'm correct, and 11 against Texas. He hasn't broken loose offensively quite yet, but – does he change the way teams have to defend you because of the respect he garners at the three-point line? I, I, you know, that's part of it. Plus, again, I think he knows his role. And, you know, he drove once in the first half and tried to go on Jericho Sims. But <laughs> and we were all kind of watching the film and like, uh, you know, what are you trying to do, Luke? But, uh, but for the most part, he stays within it. And, and the other part, he's been pretty good defensively, which I think if I – I'll be honest, I'm surprised he's – you're going against really good guards and he's been able to switch and stay in front of them. Um, you know, he, he stays spread out, gives us space. Uh, you know, he's, he jumped up and made, you know, made a three the other day. Uh, you know, so it, you know, he, he's done a nice job of fitting in uh, and, and figuring out what he, how he can help us. Thanks coach. Uh, another question for Kellis Robinette. Hey, at least when Luke tried that, he did go with his left hand after driving. So he at least got the shot up. Yes, he got uh, the shot up. Yes. <laughs> um, I, you mentioned this uh, a few times. You don't have anybody to put in behind Antonio. 
it, does that mean Siri and Carlton are, are hurt or what's their status? No, no, I'm just saying that, you know, Siri's just, he's just a young guy and he's, he's, he's got to learn. This is, it's, it's hard. It, this is, this is, uh, you know, the, this step up to college basketball is a hard thing, especially the defensive concepts on it. Um, you know, when we're playing teams that play small ball or spread you out. You know, he, he right now, Siri's probably more a backup at the five uh, than okay. than that. Uh, you know, and the same thing with Carlton. That's one of our – and it's more the defensive part of it uh, than anything. And especially, you know, the teams we've been playing, you know, they're playing small ball. You know, again, we're going to play – Oklahoma State and and I guess Isaac's the four, Cade's the four. I'm not sure who's the four. So, uh, you know, you so you it, it it's tough for those guys to guard those people. And uh, you know we and and Siri's a great young man. He texted me the other night. Just that's so sorry, coach. Uh, I'm trying and and I and I I just told him, hey, I appreciate it. Uh, I understand this is hard. It's a big step. Uh, you know, and, and, you know, just keep working at it. And, and uh, you know, when he's, he, he would be our third, I guess, our, our third five, uh, uh, five man, I, I guess, just because of his athleticism. Carlton's probably a little better offensively, but, you know, the defensive part, he just never, because he missed so much, he just, it was hard for him to catch up. All right, gotcha. Thanks, Bruce. Uh, next question to Tim Fitzgerald. Uh, Co Coach, following up on Siri, um, this is kind of a bonus year. I mean, he's apologizing yes. because he's not given much, but he's getting minutes that he wouldn't probably have gotten. Would would you be open to redshirting him next year, even after all this, or is that just too much? Um, I think that would, we just have to wait and see how much progress. I think this is for all these guys, even Carlton. I've talked to Carlton. I said, Carlton, I would have redshirted you this year. Because you were you were hurt, you didn't you didn't get the practice, you didn't get to work out, you didn't get to do anything, and you know any time you got gives you an experience that you would have never you know been able. Even Luke, uh, we wouldn't have played him. I you know you're you're talking Luke didn't get back to what mid January. It 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 would have you would not have played him. So any of these minutes that they get, experiences that they get, are as you say, it's a, in a, in a way it's a freebie for them and. And you now use experience. Now, what do you do with it? You know, and, and you know, we, it, whether it's Siri, Carlton, Luke, uh, you know, any of the guys that, that have had this opportunity, um, now what, you know, where do you go? And, and what do you do with that? And how hard do you work? Uh, I'm going to be blunt here. Some, some of the past guys you've had on your bench, um, I'm not sure how advanced they were going to get. Siri's a guy that I, I, I watch. And he's so raw, but yet there's something there, isn't there? Yes, he's got great upside. Uh, he really does. Uh, you know, he he has instincts. And I actually, I can read you the text I sent him the other night. I said, you have instincts that other guys do not have on our team. And and he can go make plays uh, that other guys can't. He just, the, the game is just too fast for him right now. And and again, I he might have to come in Saturday and help us. There's, you know, I'm not saying... Um, you know, especially with them, they're 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 kind of small and athletic and bouncy. Um, you know, so again, I haven't given up on them. Um, I just think we've gotten into a little bit of a better rotation, uh, especially you talked about defensively. But he uh, he has some natural ability that that other guys now. I think he wants it. You know, now when you get you know when you get past the season. It's like anybody. What what do you do with it? You know the Barry Browns, the Dean Wades, those guys. You know they they put they use their experiences to put their that work ethic and and double triple gear. Uh, you know, and then they put the time in, and that's why they made big jumps. And you know, hopefully Surrey's that same kind of guy. Thanks, coach. Sorry. Uh, one last question to Ryan Black. Oh, one of, go ahead, coach. Or go ahead, uh, Brian. Yeah. 
Uh, hey, Bruce, certainly uh, I understand, you know, the majority of the questions being focused on the, on the previous game because of just how close the final score was. But obviously you guys were only down five to Texas Tech at halftime and only lost – you were down only six to them with two minutes to go. I guess when you look back at the Texas Tech game too, what were the other things that also carried over from that game into, into the game against Texas? I think those stats I, I mentioned to you, uh, you know, points off, you know, whether it's turnovers uh, with them, second chance to toughness points, um, we've, we've done much better on all of those. Uh, obviously, Tones, uh, Antonio's rebounding has been a, a big factor. Um, you know, I think that that has helped us. Uh, you know, our, our defensive rotations and blocks outs has helped us. I mean, it, we're doing things better. <laughs> both offensively and defensively uh, than, than we were, you know, two weeks ago. Uh, now can we make a little more improvement and not have that one bad stretch um, in the game? And even you go back to Oklahoma State, when we played them first time, you know, we're winning under, I think it's under three minutes, under two minutes and a half with Joey playing and, and limited guys. And, you uh, uh, you know, again, we had a little stretch at the end of the half. We pushed them again in the second half, but then that little stretch where, um, you know, can we be a little more consistent uh, to give ourselves a chance? Bruce, what is the key to taking these these positives from the last two games and making sure that they, they're sustained in the, these next few games? Consistency. You know, one, keeping the faith and, and believing that you can be successful. We've made improvement. Um, you know, and, and keep doing what we've done. And then we got to get a little, uh, get more consistency. So we don't have that one bad lapse. And then the other, uh, you know, I think the other thing is just execution at gut check time. Uh, you know, we, we, these, these experiences are all new to us. And uh, I, I kind of laugh because I told the coaches, Going into Texas, I said, remember when we played uh, Texas with, with Dean and Cam and Barry's freshman year, Dean had a shot to win it at the end, uh, or tied at least. And, uh, you know, if you think back, it was a very, very similar game. You know, Mike's got the bomb, the, you know, to tie it. But you, you, you gave yourself a chance. Uh, you didn't win it. But uh, those guys used those experiences to become a really, really good players and really good team down the road. And, and, and Bruce, last thing for me, you kind of touched on it at the end when you guys played Oklahoma State the first time. That's when you guys were, I mean, a very different team just in terms of who you guys actually had available. But, of course, that is the game where, you, you know, you guys did hold Cunningham to only five points. It's the only time he's been under single digits this year. And since that game, he scored 18, 21, 19, 19, and just scored 26 against Kansas. I guess is there any way to – Expect a similar performance from you guys again against them on Saturday. Um, you know, I, 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 I'd be really happy if we can hold them under ten again. I, I don't know if that's possible. Um, he's, he's got obviously he's gotten better. I'm not sure. The first half we did a great job on him. We actually played pretty well. If you go back and look, you know, we weren't perfect by any way, by any means, but we did a great job staying compact. Uh, took away some of their easy, his easy looks. Um, uh, you know, and and then, but the second half down the stretch, he, his points, he did get going a little bit. He, uh, when we kind of pushed them, they got the ball in his hands. They, they're smart. When they need baskets, they get it into his hands. And we're going to have to do a good job of staying in front of them, uh, not giving them easy ones, make them earn everything. All right. Thank you, Bruce. Yeah. Okay, now we'll do one last question to Grant Flanders. Hey, Coach, I know you don't like uh, talking about yourself, but I had a question about how this team really does this. Uh, you know, you lose to Kansas badly, but then come back without Dejuan and have two back-to-back, -back, really, in my opinion, the best games of the season without one of your best players. And I do remember before Texas Tech, you mentioned that you may have lit a fire under them and gotten them to play that way. I'm just wondering if – I know it's the players have to do it themselves, but – how important it was your role behind this too? I think my biggest thing is I've, I've tried and, it, and I, I mean, I would tell you, I, it, I don't sleep a lot of nights. I, it's hard, you know, it's, you, did, you just wonder every day what, why things happen the way they do. But um, I, I just want to stay positive with them. I, I, you know, I keep 
we keep pushing them. Um, we did some uh, drills that we hadn't done. We should have we should have done early, but we didn't have the opportunity in practice because we didn't have people. Uh, some old you would never do your toughness drills late, maybe once in a while, just to kind of. But we I just said heck with it. We're going back to where we should have been uh, with a foundation back in uh, October and November. And, um, you know, the guys responded and, and we keep, we keep telling them we believe and, uh, you know, I, I hope they keep believing and, and I hope something good happens for them.